All right, guys, what we're going to go over today is the Google Admin Console. I've had a few questions on this, like how to create users or how to assign different aliases to users. So we're going to do a quick overview of the whole console itself. We're going to touch on users with creation, sharing, and aliases. We're also going to go over groups, reporting, app permissions, and organizational units. So let's go ahead and jump in. As we jump in, I do want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really does help me to create more content to help you in your business. Also, this week we hit 250 subscribers, which I'm super excited about. So thank you all who have already subscribed. I really do appreciate it. Uh, my next goal is 500. Let's see if we can hit that by the end of the year. It'd be kind of fun. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you do want to see more tech tips or tricks, uh, you can follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All of those links are in the description below. So go ahead and check those out. But let's go ahead and jump over to the Google Admin Console and we'll talk about users. The website we are going to is admin.google.com. You do have to have administrative credentials if you're going to use this website. So if you don't have that, contact your IT department. Uh, if you do, let's go ahead and move on forward. Once you're in, the first thing we're going to talk about is users. So go ahead and click on users. Uh, if you do want to add a new user, you just click this little add button up here and then you just put in their name and their email address you want uh, and then send them a password reset. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to let you guys do that yourself. Um, but let's click on a user that's created and we're going to get into a little bit more information on what's right here. So first off, uh, user information. This is where if you want more detail about user, like your contact information, employee information, um, this is where you'd put it. Directory sharing. What that means is that their name will be enabled in directory sharing, which is like a global address list if you're more familiar with Outlook. But essentially what that means is if I'm in my email client and I start typing this user, it's going to pull up the user if it's on. If I turn it off, they won't automatically fill in unless I've emailed this user before. So that's what directory sharing is. But here in aliases is where, let's say this is info, but I also want it to be me. So Josiah at laserhawk.xyz. And then we're gonna go ahead and click save. But before we do that, I wanna show you this. If you do have multiple domains, in your account, you can choose which domain they're going to have. So like if I have laserhocket.xyz or nextaconsultants.com, it'll show up right here. So you can click that and decide what you want it to be. Uh, and you can have multiple domains on one user account without paying more in licensing, which is really cool. If you look at another video I have, it'll pop up here is how to create filters. And that makes it really handy if you're going to have multiple domains as you want to filter it. So you know which email you're going to. So go ahead and click save once you've added the alias. So now this person will also receive emails to this email along with their main email up here. Now we're going to go back to the main page of this user and we can click on security. This is where you find out like if they're using two-step authentication, two, if they're using uh, recovery information, if you need to add that in or change it should they've lost an old email address. And if this is a suspended account, you can click on login challenge and actually turn it off for 10 minutes. So that way you can get into their account without having to mess everything up. Um, don't use this very often. It's not really a good way to get into somebody's account, especially if they're active, only if it's an employee that you've terminated uh, that you should be getting into their account. Otherwise contact them to get in. So another helpful thing on the dashboard is if you scroll down to shared drives, you can go here and see what shared drives a person is attached to. Currently, I'm not in any shared drives, um, but if somebody is, you click here and it will show you like, hey, they have access to the customer folder or which drives they have access to. Um, another one that you could do that with is groups. So if you have a lot of different groups like team at LaserHawk.xyz, I'm a group member of that. This is also where you can see really quickly if they're in a group or like I said, in a shared drive. So I just find that the most useful information on this page. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move into groups. All right, so we're going to jump into groups, but I want to explain something really quick about groups. So groups are essentially an email alias that multiple people can be in uh, or a distribution list like all staff. If you want to email all of your staff with one email, uh, this is how you do it. The other thing is it's also a security group. So you can attach a group to a shared drive and it will give them permissions to that shared drive without adding each individual email address. 
This is really helpful if you have like a marketing team and you want to have multiple shared drives where they can get into the marketing uh, for this customer or marketing for that customer folders without having to type in the entire marketing team every time. Um, so let's hop over. I'll show you a little bit about groups. I'm not going to explain a ton on it because I have a whole video going over groups. Um, they are free. So it's also a nice way to get another email address, but there is a link that will pop up right over here to take you to that video. And it's also in the description below. So let's go ahead and hop down over to groups. So this is a group that I've created. And if you click on it, you can see general information. So this is the group email. This is the email address that will come to this group here. You can also add aliases. So if you have like marketing and you want to put in a couple ways, like if somebody spells marketing wrong and they switch the A and R, you could put that in here. Um, and the email will still get sent through. So the other spot is in here. You click on members and you'll be able to see all of the members in this group. Uh, you can change your permissions here in the drop down is manager and member. Uh, I typically only use owner and member. Uh, that's just how I manage groups. Cause it just makes it easier for me to have that clear distinction. Um, and then going back to it, we also have settings, which these like in that other video I went into great detail on. So basically, um, should they be able to contact owners, view members, view conversations, public posts? Uh, if you want people to be able to email this group from outside your organization, this has to be published post external. Um, I, my typical group settings, I take it down to group members. I don't want the entire organization to view normally and that, and I leave it like this. This is how I typically manage groups uh, with these settings, but that's really it. That's all I really want to say on groups because I do have a whole video that you can go check out um, link in the description below. So let's hop over to the next section and talk a little bit more about apps. So I want to tell you a little bit about what apps are. So basically it's anything in the Google workspace environment. Um, you have Gmail, you have Drive, you have Calendar, YouTube, Google Ads. Uh, photos, Hangouts, uh, Keep, Forms, all of those things you can customize individually inside of this admin console and set it up the way you want. So let's go ahead and hop back over to the admin console and I'll show you how that works. All right, so from the home menu, you're gonna go ahead and click on apps. And what you'll see here, what we're gonna focus on in this video is a Google Workspace specific apps. So just a couple of these. So we're gonna talk about Calendar, Gmail, and Drive a little bit. Uh, so if you click on the calendar app, this is where you can decide if you want people in your organization to send information to each other or to people outside of your organization and how you want calendars default to show up when a coworker adds the ca their calendar to yours. Do you want it to show as busy by default or do you actually want them to see the events on the calendar? Uh, so go ahead and click on the sharing settings. And what you'll see here is, do you want external sharing options for primary calendars? Uh, so this is the calendar that is their primary. So like my personal calendar, should I be able to share that externally? Uh, you can set the max level of information they're allowed to share externally here. So then internal sharing options for primary calendars is what's the default to share it internally when I share it. Do I want, do I want them to see all information free, busy or no sharing? And then you can go into more about the calendar event. Are you going to allow video conferencing or not? Uh, are you even going to allow external invitations? And do you allow your employees to set default working hours? What that means is if I'm going to schedule an event with you, it'll tell me, Hey, this is out of the person's normal working hours. Do you want to pick a different time? Uh, so this is totally up to you. This is kind of the general sharing information that you want to have in calendars. Um, but that's really all I want to touch on in calendars. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Google workspace and we're going to go into drive and docs. So when you click on drive and docs, there's a few different options here. The things I use the most when I'm setting up an account is sharing settings, obviously, because I want to decide same thing with calendar. You basically do want to share internal, external, uh, what are the parameters that you allow your users to share? So since we've already gone that over that a little bit in calendar, we're going to jump back and go to migration settings. Um, so when I'm moving something into shared drives, do I want to allow my users to migrate stuff from their personal drive to a shared drive? That's what this means. And, and to be clear, this is only files. It is not a folder. So am I allowing them to move a single file into shared drives or not? That's going to be this option. Going back, we also have 
manage shared drives with if there's any shared drives in your organization this is where you can manage them you can see every single one that's been created because remember a shared drive is the organizational is the owner of the shared drive so this is where you would manage that if you go down to transfer ownership, I use this a lot, uh, especially when some when somebody leaves the organization, we don't wanna lose any files that are in their personal folder. So what we do is we transfer it to their supervisor or transfer it to the person that took over their position. Um, what that allows is it gives the person that it's transferred to a folder that says transfer from username. Uh, and it allows them to see all those files. If there's any sharing settings on them, you don't lose them. Um, so this is just really handy and helpful if should somebody or when somebody leaves your organization. So that's really it for shared drives. Uh, what we're going to move on to next is I want to talk a little bit about the Gmail app. The Gmail app, go ahead and click on it. So first off, you have user settings. This is really just the spot where setting name formats, allowing you you to describe what the user can and can't do. Are you going to let them choose their theme and their email? Or are you going to force it on them? Are you going to let them do red receipts or set up email delegation? So if you ever have weird issues where a user can't do something or your whole organization can't do something is what I should say. Uh, this is where you look uh, to see what would be going on in the Gmail app. Um, the next thing is really that I want to talk about that I use a lot and you should use if you're not. So if you're managing your Google uh, domain, click on authenticate email. What this is, is it's called DKIM protection. There's two types of protections you should have in your email. You should have an SPF record and DKIM, bare minimum. Those are the two you should have. So to enable DKIM, what you're going to do is you're going to come in here. You're going to click on generate new record. Go ahead and generate it. And it's going to give you this text entry that you're going to put into your uh, domains DNS records. Once you've done that, come back here and click start authentication. This is super important because what it does, is it helps your emails be delivered more appropriately to the people you're sending them to. Cause a lot of places, if you have an issue with DKIM or SBF records, they'll deliver your message into spam. Um, so you want to make sure that you have this set up, uh, in your records to ensure your mail is flowing properly. And that's really kind of the main things that I want to go over in the Gmail side of the app. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over, we're going to be done with apps and we're going to go over to reporting. All right, guys, as we talk about reporting, I just want to let you know, this is really a spot that you can just kind of have fun and play with. I'm going to show you one area that I use reporting a lot for, um, but this shows graphs on like what email sent, how many files are created. It's a really cool area if you're just looking for statistics on your domain. So let's hop back over to the admin console and we will get into reporting. At the home screen, click on reports. And remember you do have the three little buttons on the left. And if you go down to reporting and click on highlights, it will also take you to the same spot. Um, like I said, there's tons of stuff in here. You've got app reports, who's using drive, who's how many emails are flowing, uh, user reports. Are they logging in? Are they using two, two factor auth? Uh, all of those type of reports. The ones I use the most is my email log search. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the report list and click on email log search, this is super helpful because you can track down how emails are flowing. No, you can't see the entire contents of the message in there, but you can see whether it was delivered to the person's spam mail, if it's an internal account, if it goes external, you can't. But if somebody's saying, hey, I, I was supposed to get this email, but I never got it. I, where is it? This is where you'd go to find out. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search uh, for date just today. And I'm going to put in my email because I, I don't, this is my test domain. So I don't have a lot of emails in here, but this is essentially how it works. You pick a date sender is if you're sending the email out. So somebody who says, Hey, my email never got delivered. What happened? Uh, recipient is if somebody is supposed to receive an email and they think they never got it. Uh, so go ahead and click search there and it will pop up with any emails that were sent from me today. So you can see it'll show you the subject line, the time and the sender. Uh, you can click on it and actually get more information. Like I said, the full email is not in here, but you can see here that was delivered to an SMTP server with the address here. And you can see that it was fully delivered. Um, message ID. This is if you have somebody who sent a message specifically and they give it to you 
which never happens. Um, but if they did, you would put this in your search parameter. Then you can also see here, they only sent it to one person. It was delivered and you're good to go. And you can say, hey, the message was sent. Don't worry about it. Or it will say it was blocked or something like that. Most of the time it's going to be in here. Uh, back to results. If you know the subject, you could search that and message ID, like I said. So that's kind of email log search. It's super helpful when you're tracking down issues that happened uh, and trying to find out what to do and how to help your uh, customers with their email issues. So that's really all I want to say with reports. Uh, it's a really fun place to dive into and kind of get lost looking at the different data, uh, what your organization is doing. But let's go ahead and hop over to talk about organizational units now. Now let's jump into organizational units. Organizational units really takes everything that we talked about and kind of brings it together. It brings users into a certain permissive group on apps. So what you're going to use organizational groups for is like I mentioned earlier with apps, you can set up certain permissions and organizational units is how you would set up an account to be an email only account or to have email in YouTube and all the other apps you need, but you don't want them to have Google ads. So you'll take that out of that organizational unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up an organizational unit and how to add or remove apps. So let's hop over and do that now. All right. So on your home screen, you're going to click on organizational units. If you're not, it's not, if you're not on your home screen, click the little three buttons. It's in directory, just so you know, in organizational units. So to create a new organizational unit, it's this really awesome plus sign right here, really big. So we're going to call this test and we're going to say remove calendar and we're going to create that. All right. So now we have our organizational unit. So here's where, it, like I said, it kind of ties everything together. So you can't really do much more than add an organizational unit here. If you want to move somebody into the organizational unit, you go to the directory and users, and we're going to click on here and say more change organizational unit. And we're going to put me into test and click continue. So that's how you move somebody in there. It's saying, Hey, be careful because if you're moving somebody into an organizational unit and they don't have an app, they will lose access to that app and you might even lose data. So just be really careful when you move people. Uh, but we're going to go and click change. And then I'm going to go back to our apps dashboard. And so in here, if I want to remove calendar, it's going to be in Google workspace. Um, but essentially any app that you want to remove is going to be either is going to be in this area. You're mostly going to be using Google workspace or additional Google services. Uh, if you purchase additional apps, that's where these would be. Um, on the right side over here, these three, but what we're going to do is we're going to go into Google workspace since my description was remove calendar. So you see the calendar here. And if you click on this right here, it'll say, turn off for everyone. Do not do that. That is not what you want to do. You want to go down and click on your test organizational unit and then go to calendar and click this little three buttons here. And you're going to say off override and you're going to turn off. So now you'll see it's not inherited anymore. It's overridden and it's off. But if we go back to the regular domain, you can see it's still on. Um, so that's kind of how you enable it. A couple apps that might be helpful when you're kind of moving forward in your organization, deciding whether you want them on or not, is if you go to the additional Google services, is stuff like uh, Campaign Manager or C Chrome Web Store. If you don't want people purchasing from the Chrome Web Store, you can either turn it off. You could even turn it off for everyone and say, turn off, but in my test domain, then I want to go in and say, Hey, I want Chrome web store to actually be on just for my, this one domain. And that's what I would do a lot for like Google ads or Google AdSense, those type of things that we don't really want every person to have access to, but we do want our marketing team to have access to. So that's a little bit about apps. Um, if you have any questions, definitely drop it in the comments below and I'd be happy to help out. And I hope this helped you out in some way that you were able to figure out something new about Google Admin Console or something you didn't know how to do. If you do have any questions, like I said, please drop it in the comments below. I'd love to help out, uh, maybe create another video for you, but make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you did like it and it did help you and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I appreciate it and I will see you guys next time.